Alliance War Season 52 is here, and 4 Loki is back, fresh off a top 10 finish. But this time, the battlefield is different. With all new tactics and strategies, alliances will have to adapt or fall. Who will rise to the challenge, and who will be left behind? The fight for supremacy begins now. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. We are kicking off Alliance War Season 52 with War Number 1, and we are up against Nefty. This is an exciting one because it's the first time we're actually facing the global tactic head-on since most alliances remove their bosses during the offseason and we didn't get to face it. So this war is definitely going to be a little bit more intense than what we've seen lately. For this war, I'm bringing in the team of Kate Bishop, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, and Shuri. We're going to see how well they handle the new challenges, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this all plays out against the global tactic. Let's get into it. First up in this war is going to be using Kate Bishop against this thing on Ebb and Flow Knockdown. You're going to see that I will throw on her Cryo Arrow so that we can inflict the Cold Snap. Plan going in here is to get the Evade from the Parry, do a Medium, back off, do a regular 5-hit combo, followed up by another 5-hit combo into Special 1, should end me at exactly 15 Rock Stacks. That's the plan. Let's see how I do. All right, so we get into the fight. Hey, we didn't get the parry. We're just going to back away. Let's try it again. There we go. I've practiced this a couple times. I wanted to make sure I got the combo right so that I ended right on 15. My biggest thing when fighting thing is just managing the rock stacks. And there we go. So there's the special one. We get the perfect release and at 15 rock stacks. And he so graciously throws the special right away. Now, just going to keep the cold snap on. There we go, get him back in there, refresh the cold snap, bait out the special. Now we're going to do a couple hits. There it gets us to 10. I'm just trying to bait the special out so I can get five hits in. And unfortunately, kind of messed it up. Didn't get him to 15. So we're going to hit into his block a little bit. Get him over 15. Now we're going to bait a special one. Get another special one of our own off with another perfect release. Refresh those cold snaps. And now he is just chunking away. It's just time to refresh them, make sure they don't fall off. And the rest of this fight is just managing rock stacks from here. Not too worried about the little bit of chip damage. I'm not using her in another fight. And this one's over. Nice start to the war. Alright, second fight up is going to be this Negasonic Teenage Warhead. And to be honest, this was the fight that I was probably the most worried about coming in here. Very first tactic fight of the season against somebody I can't really parry. So my plan was to build up my 10 armors, back up against the wall, and then kind of do the heavy phase to get an opening. Um, so there we go. We've now got our armors up. We just need her to come after me. And I go to Untouchable. And she didn't really hit into me, so... It didn't really work out very well there with my plan. So you know what? I'm going to reset it. We're going to do it again. And, you know, we did manage to get in an intercept there. So we do have the global down now. We can see that you've got the uh, the heal block on there. And I'm just looking for openings and ways to get her down. Um, hasn't happened yet, but there we go. We finally get a special one. That'll knock her down to remove the protection so I can actually do some damage. So she throws her special one and I can go in. What we didn't realize, or at least I didn't realize going into it, and you could see the issue there, was the passive shocks, the critical shocks that you put on, do not count towards the global. So, by throwing the special one, I wasn't refreshing the debuff counter, and was kind of hurting myself. And there, you know, after the special three, I'm stunned. I get five incinerates on me. Here, I am realized, okay, so this passive didn't work. Let's get an opening. Let's get some regular shocks on here going to take a few hits because I still have the critical up for at least two more which is going to make it a little bit more difficult but because of the special two we were able to play some debuffs all works out in the end but yeah I at this point I'm a little little bit nervous um, I'm down way below what she is and there you know we really didn't learn we weren't really focused that much on it uh, you can see that the global is down again. I could very easily screw up here, but fortunately the crits and a special one finish her off. She doesn't 
miss. Oof, a lot going on in that fight. Even trying to explain it, it makes it very hard. But we got through it somehow. All right, now for a little breather, we get a Korg. Which, if you followed me and this channel for very long, you know I do not like fighting Korg. But, at least with NTW here, Korg is a little bit easier. Not easy, just easier. So, you know, we're just going to play Negasonic the way I play Negasonic. So you're going to see here, we're going to start off with a parry, medium, into a heavy because of the extended stun. No problem, we've got the uh, incinerate vulnerability on there. Now we do medium, medium, and then a standard 5-hit combo. And then we're just going to do a 5-hit combo to get him to a special 2, beta special 2. And then we're going to do our 5-hit combo into our special 2. And we're going to tap the left side of the screen like a maniac to try and get 16 incinerates, which we were able to do. And I really wasn't expecting that special 1 there. It hurt, but you know what? I'm only using her for this fight, so it didn't hurt too bad. Now I'm trying to get to a special one to refresh those incinerates, and we got it on there, and we build on a few more. Now if we'll throw a special two for me. You know, it'll only take one or two more hits. I have them almost down, and you know, she isn't bad for Korg. You know, 45, 50 second fight, and we're out. Like I said, not too worried about the special one damage I took there. Not using her again. All right, now for a fun little fight. We've got this Mephisto. Shuri is not the greatest Mephisto counter in the world. She counters the global, but not him very well. So we're going to be backing off. We're going to be taking this fight slow, which I don't like doing, but it's got to be done for this one. So plan going in here is not to throw a special one. It really, really hurts Shuri's damage output. There's no way around it. So, you know, not being able to throw the special one does not make these fights any easier at all. So there, you know, he's got his um, incinerate aura up, so we're just going to try and stay away from him when that's up, you know, and we're just going to have to play it. And, you know, there it is again, and we're going to try and stay away, so we're not taking, you know, a lot of extra damage we don't need to take. Um, and we're just going to try to keep our debuffs up there. Right now, I you can see I've got the four there, so I just need one more to kind of reapply the global. And there we go, so we've now reapplied it. The nice thing about using Shuri here and a tactic attacker is, you know, when he gets down to the 35% life, he's not going to regen up any, as long as you've got the heal block on there. And you can see here, I need two more. There we go. So it is now reapplied. And like I said, we're just taking this fight slow. You know, we're backing off when he's got his aura of incineration up trying to make sure we don't get hit by the special one. We're just playing everything cautious there. I miss a parry. Just more chip damage, more heals. All the fun stuff that goes along with it. Now let's make sure we get the global back on. We did. This will push him to where he would normally regen. And you can see there he doesn't regen up, which is nice. This is a slow enough fight as is using Shuri without a special one. You can really see the difference when you're using her... Um, and you're able to throw special ones and get those guaranteed crits, they really do help out a lot. I, I think as we get more familiar with the tactic, we'll be able to weave in some special ones, like I did there. Um, but you can see, I did push them red, and if it wasn't close to the end, I could have been in trouble there. All right, now it is time to jump ahead to Node 49 and this Sauron. And it's also time to see if I have learned anything from the first two global tactic fights that I've had. So the plan coming in here is I can't parry him. So I've got to let him hit into my block so I can build up the, the shocks. Um, I'm going to throw on an invuln boost. Like I said, can't parry. You only gain power through getting shocks on him. So, you know, this is a, a trickier fight not being able to throw a special one. So there, you know, we're going to let him hit into us, bait the heavy out. Okay, so we've got four on there. We need him to hit into our block one more time. All right, so we do have the node blocked. So far, so good. Bait the special one. I'm comfortable dexing it for some reason. 
At that time I missed, but you know, it was only one hit on it. I still have a couple hits left on my invon, which is fine. You know, I'll take that all day long if that's the case. There we go, we get a clean dex that time. And I do not have the global on, and then I accidentally parried him. Not a great start. Able should be able to recover. He's at a special two now. I'm degen or degening down from the um, brute force on the node. There we go. We get a special two off. Okay, let's try and reset the fight here a little bit. Still don't have the global down, so he's healing up. Throws a special one. I start degening. We get the global down finally. Now we just want another special one. I'm getting backed into the corner, which I don't like. I could not, for some reason, dex that. I ended up taking it in the block. And we've got brute force on us again. You can kind of see how this fight is going. Really, really slow. Really painful. And, you know, if we can get into a good rotation, and there we go. We've got, finally, a good dex on a special one. Took a little bit of it in the block, because I do want to build up my shocks. You know, brute force going again. I need five shocks. There's two. And we get another special two off. You know, we're starting to get into a little bit of a, a rhythm in the fight. The shocks are starting to build up on them, starting to do a little bit damage. But you can see I'm not applying any new. So the global is back again. Now well, we've got three that count towards the global now. And of course he's got his unblockable, and of course he's not wanting to throw a special. There we go, finally throws a special, taking more brute force damage. I was hoping that maybe the refresh would count as a debuff, it didn't. There we took the first part of the special into the block, so we had one more so we could apply the kill block. Just makes us a very slow, painful fight. There we go. See, we're starting just to take them in the block so that I can have the ability to apply new shocks. You know, I hate taking that much block damage. Hindsight, playing the fight, I would have done that all along. There, just that random heavy. Then I panic, throw a special two because I had the, the um, brute force on me. You know, there's no way I was going to finish that. Even missing the intercept, it wasn't a big deal. I had 2% health. I couldn't take any more chip damage. And, well, you know, first death of the season. Not too terribly disappointed by it. You know, it's a learning experience. You know, what does it do? Well, you can see here. Cost of revive, not a big deal there. And here we go. We're going to throw on one regular level 4 health boost. And then a bunch of level five. So four more potions. You can see the potion count up there. Kind of painful, this war. Um, do not like using that many potions. But first war in a new tactic. You know, unfortunately I died. And here we go. So, you know, we build up a couple. What I've got to learn in this tactic is when I only have like two shocks I can apply, do the two hits and back off. Um, that chance of miss, if I miss on this guy, it's over. So there we go. You can see I've started, like I learned in the first fight against him, take it into block to build up the, the shocks. Here, I figured I could finish him off with a five hit combo. Didn't quite work. And, you know, kind of being a little risky here on the cleanup. But I wanted this down fairly quick. And here we go. Finish him off right there. So we got through it. Not the cleanest fights, but, you know, overall, pretty happy with the way my fights ended up in this war. Unfortunately, we couldn't pull off the win this time. Nifty really brought their A game, and we're starting off the season 52 with an 0 1 record. It's always tough to start a season with a loss, but we have learned a lot from this war. I start off with five kills and one death. We've all got some adjustments to make, and hopefully we can bounce back stronger in our next matchup. Thanks for tuning in and supporting the channel as always. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and leave me a comment down below. And until I see you in the next video, take care all.